This is an apple tree in front of the yard of my house near Albany, New York, USA. The video was shot from underneath the apple tree on 15 August 2016. Normally I advise against walking outside on places that don't have pavement or gravel because soil contains lots of invertebrates, some of which may be painfully crushed by your footsteps. However, I made an exception to film this video in order to improve my understanding of what kinds of life lives in this environment. By and large, the kinds of invertebrates I found were similar to those that I saw in the open lawn of my yard, including spiders, springtails, and earthworms in the soil. This apple had fallen from the tree and was attracting flies. I think this may be a ball of rabbit poop. Based on pictures online, it also looks like it could be deer poop, but I doubt a deer could get under the tree here. This springtail seems to be missing its left antenna. I wonder how it lost it. I think there were more slugs under the apple tree than in open grass because the tree provided shade, which kept the conditions cooler and moister. Here you can see a woodlouse running into a slug. According to Wikipedia, quote, when attacked, slugs can contract their body, making themselves harder and more compact and more still and round. By doing this, they become firmly attached to the substrate. This, combined with the slippery mucus they produce, makes slugs more difficult for predators to grasp. The unpleasant taste of the mucus is also a deterrent. Intra- and interspecific agonistic behavior is documented, but varies greatly among slug species. Slugs often resort to aggression, attacking both conspecifics and individuals from other species when competing for resources. This aggressiveness is also influenced by seasonality because the availability of resources, such as shelter and food, may be compromised due to climatic conditions. Slugs are prone to attack during the summer when the availability of resources is reduced. During winter, the aggressive responses are substituted by a gregarious behavior." End quote. You can see the blood pumping in this earthworm. According to this page, quote, "...insects, like all other arthropods, have an open circulatory system, which differs in both structure and function from the closed circulatory system found in humans and other vertebrates. In a closed system, blood is always contained within vessels, arteries, veins, capillaries, or the heart itself. In an open system, blood, usually called hemolymph, spends much of its time flowing freely within body cavities, where it makes direct contact with all internal tissues and organs." End quote. But earthworms are not arthropods. Instead, they're members of the phylum Annelida. And according to this page, quote, the earthworm has a closed circulatory system. An earthworm circulates blood exclusively through vessels. There are three main vessels that supply the blood to organs within the earthworm. These vessels are the aortic arches, dorsal blood vessels, and ventral blood vessels. The aortic arches function like a human heart. There are five pairs of aortic arches, which have the responsibility of pumping blood into the dorsal and ventral blood vessels." End quote. Earthworms are capable of classical conditioning. For example, this 1959 study paired vibration, the conditioned stimulus, with light, which is an unconditioned stimulus that induces withdrawal. By repeating this pairing, 
worms learned to withdraw due to the presence of the vibrations alone. The authors explained, quote, the percentages of avoidance responses occurring prior to the onset of the light increased during successive blocks of trials and then decreased during extinction trials. That the systematic change in behavior was not due to either sensitization by the vibration or light or to random responses was indicated by the behavior of the control groups." End quote. This 1979 article explains, quote, over the last half century, more than a dozen studies of T maze learning in the earthworm have been reported. The great majority of these studies suggested learning to be possible. However, doubts concerning the methodology used have been raised, and some have questioned whether any of the data presented are sufficiently free of confounds to be interpreted as evidence of learning. The results of the present series of experiments suggest that space can indeed be organized by L. terrestris through use of chemical stimuli, including odor. Additionally, the rapidity of the appropriate increase or decrease in choice speed found only in the presence of an above threshold odor suggests more than a taxis is involved. Suggestions that earthworms may not be able to learn were indeed premature. The earthworm, like other animals, can learn rapidly. It is reasonable to assume that these animals, like others, are prepared to detect the existence of associations of ecologically meaningful stimuli with other equally meaningful consequences. Presumably, the odor of rubbing alcohol taps into the mechanism for this learning. Apparently, other readily available stimuli do not. Our conclusion is that L. terrestris shows plasticity primarily in the ability to use chemical stimuli, e.g. odor, as indicators of consequences. That is, a form of selective association is suggested. End quote. Use the lawn across the driveway from the apple tree. You can see some invertebrates flying and jumping about in the grass. 